The data written to your camera storage is massively compressed from what the camera sensor initially receives. This is for many reasons, such as achieving usable file sizes and processing limits of your camera. Your picture profile determines how the data your sensor captures is processed and compressed to its final photo or video file. Controlling it allows you to squeeze as much potential out of your camera as possible for the environment that you are shooting in. Your camera will come with many profile presets and each brand has a slightly different options. I will be using Sony for examples, but the fundamentals are the same. So how does this work and what do we choose? The process of taking your data from sensor to storage is known as encoding. There are two main categories for this, gamma encoding, which results in a standard image that's ready to go, and log encoding, resulting in an image that's much flatter and looking far too gray, lacking in color, to be used immediately. Let's introduce you to color waveforms. You'll get to know this graph much better in the editing section of Creative Shortcut, but what it does is visualize the data in our image rather than showing us the final video output that you actually watch. The top of the graph has our brightest pixels, our highlights, and the bottom our darkest shadows. Their colors represent the colors of the pixels that you would actually see on screen. You can clearly see my bright white top and the bright window in this waveform. Now let's jump back into the example codex and compare. You can see that the image filmed with a standard picture profile uses all of the available space and the log picture profile is much flatter, staying away from the top or the bottom. This is because the log profile hasn't applied the contrast and saturation to the image in camera, leaving it to be done in the edit, whereas the standard profile has applied the contrast and saturation during the gamma encoding process. Each camera brand has their own standard setup. If you are a beginner, there's absolutely no harm in using the setting. It's convenient and fast to edit, but log profiles provide much more room for crafting the image exactly how you want it. It also has one major advantage dynamic range. Dynamic range is the range of brightness that your camera can record. The range is defined by stops. A bright outside landscape shot can require around 17 stops to perfectly capture the detail in both the bright highlights and the dark shadows. Our eyes can manage this, but most cameras are far off achieving this. In gamma format, an average mirrorless camera is capable of achieving about eight to 10 stops of dynamic range. Whereas log formats can push that same camera to achieve around 10 to 12 stops. Shooting with higher dynamic range means that you can capture more dark and bright details simultaneously. Whereas when dynamic range is lower, you have to choose if you want the bright parts of your image blown out or your shadows to be crushed. Neither is ideal, but you don't have a choice. So for most situations, you want as much dynamic range as possible to keep both your shadows and highlights detailed. This leaves most filmers flocking to their preferred log picture profiles. However, log profiles aren't perfect. There are three main issues that you are gonna come across. The first is color depth followed by shooting brighter and then finally increased noise. The color depth that your camera is able to achieve is how many individual colors your camera can actually define. Even the majority of top range mirrorless cameras pre-2020 can only film 8-bit color. An 8-bit camera can define over 16 million individual colors. It sounds like a lot, but if you film in more aggressive log or flat format, 8-bit is not enough. This is because as you start stretching out that flat image and saturating it, there isn't enough color data left after encoding and the 8-bit footage can fall apart. What this means is that as you bring the image up to its final look, you can end up with color bands forming on your footage where it wasn't recorded with enough color information to achieve a nice gradient. In comparison, 10-bit can define over a billion individual colors, which is 64 four times more than 8-bit. Having an 8-bit camera is not the end of the world. Look at the image I'm getting out of mine. You just wouldn't want to film in an extreme log profile, such as S-Log3 or C-Log3. Log formats also force you to shoot brighter exposures, both requiring a higher exposure level than filming in gamma and having much higher base ISOs of around 800 or greater. I will cover the exact settings and overexposure marks you need to look for 
for each of the specific profiles following this video. So all you need to understand is that the high base ISO will likely require you to first step down the exposure using an ND filter to block some light before it is then brought back up by the high ISO. This is inconvenient and adds an extra layer of glass that could have dust, marks or reflections on and makes it harder to prevent noise in your image. Noise occurs when your sensor isn't getting strong enough wavelengths to correctly determine the colour of light it is receiving. It also happens when you turn the sensitivity of your ISO up too high. Remember the example in frame rates where your average mirrorless camera can only process 100 megabits of data per second. Well, once you've broken that down into the individual frames, the data is split further depending on how you're making up your frame. Dynamic range is one of those factors. The larger your dynamic range is, the less bandwidth can be used for recording the data at each stop. This means that the higher your dynamic range is, the tighter your window is for nailing exposure as there is less processing available for each of the stops. As well as this, gamma and log don't treat each step the same. Gamma will favor data between the shadows and midtones, whereas log applies the same amount of data equally. This is why you have to film brighter for log than for gamma. But what do we do when we can't light up our scene? For example, filming at night, we can't bring the sky back. You already know that filming at lower frame rates enables you to have more data per frame and a longer shutter speed. So you will get less noise at 25 FPS than you will at 100 fps. You can also film in higher resolutions which will make the noise smaller and less noticeable. It is also possible to process and reduce noise during your edit but it is a high intensity task for your computer and slows down the editing process. This is where picture profiles come in. The best thing you can do is film with a picture profile designed for low light filming. Rec 709 is the main standard camera encoding color space for HDTV. It's what keeps all the content you watch similar. Any information outside of this space is compressed during the edit and render process to fit inside it. This is great because it means we can keep all the details from our higher dynamic range environments. When you watch videos on your phone, computer or TV, you only see about five stops of dynamic range. And at night, you really only have around five to six stops of dynamic range to record compared to our landscape shot on a sunny day at 17 stops. So during low light sets, we can use a picture profile that is even more compressed than a standard profile profile, filming around six stops of dynamic range. Using my low light profile, which I will show and walk you through in the next bits of Creative Shortcut after this video, I was able to film these shots with my ISO pushing as high as 25 to 40,000, depending on how much artificial lighting was available. No noise processing has been done here. The image is a combination of a high resolution, low frame rate, shooting low dynamic range range and working with the artificial light available. As you can see, it's great and so much better than if I had to film this in log. Finally, we have hybrid profiles. HLG, Hybrid Log Gamma, is a Sony hybrid profile where your shadows and midtones are processed in the standard gamma format and your highlights are filmed in log. It's the best of both worlds with good protection for your highlights and an image that needs less work during your edit to get it looking great. If your camera shoots 8-bit and you want a fast turnaround for your edits, it's a great option. The exact settings I use for my camera and individual picture profiles are up next in their own individual sections for your convenience. We could go far more in depth on this topic, but it's just not necessary. Ultimately, all you need to do is copy my setup and then when you are ready to move away from your camera's standard profile, switch between profiles depending on the conditions you are shooting in. For high dynamic range, such as the middle of the day sun and dark shadows, choose the 8-bit or 10-bit log profile. For a faster edit with protected highlights and mid to high dynamic range scenes, use the hybrid profile. And then for darker, low dynamic range scenes, choose the low light profile. You can find my modified settings for each Sony picture profile paired with video walkthroughs to guide you in Creative Shortcut, my online community and knowledge resource pool, giving you everything you need in order to build digital assets for your business, passion or profession. It contains over 60 lessons, community 
forums, a generous automated affiliate system, and CS Boost. The ability to plug your workflow through my team in order to scale your time and get fast, high quality results whilst keeping your business model lean. It's the perfect secondary skill set and resource to push your primary goals online. Click the link to find out more. See you soon.